Good afternoon, students. So just want to go over that the unit three, the trig identity, the test, this, uh, some of the simple questions. So here's uh, the verifying the trig identity. So anytime that you try to verify the trig identity, so if you do see anything that's considered cotangent, tangent, or nothing can apply with any special identity, so you want to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So it looks like this one we need to verify for both sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So let's start it off with the left-hand side. So cotangent squared can be written as cosine square of x over sine square of x. And then tangent is just considered sine of x over cosine of x. Cosecant, the denominator, is written as 1 over 1 over sine of x. And then at the same time, the right-hand side, you want to verify that. So this one is just the Pythagorean identity. So anytime they see that sine square of x plus cosine square of x is just 1. So it's 1 over secant, which is 1 over cosine of x. So now for the right-hand side, divided by the reciprocal, well, multiplied by the reciprocal, so this one is just cosine of x. And what about the left-hand side? This one just cross-cancel. So we left with cosine of x over sine of x times the reciprocals of 1 over sine of x, which is sine of x. And then cross cancel, so we do have cosine of x equals cosine of x. And then for number two, it's quite similar. So cosecant is written as 1 over sine square of x, the reciprocal identity of cosecant. And then secant square of x is 1 over cosine square of x. Okay, so this one, the right hand side, so 1 over sine square of x minus 1. So 1 can be written as sine square of x over sine square of x. So verify the right-hand side, so we do have the same denominator, so bring that numerators all together, so 1 minus sine square of x over sine square of x. So this one is considered cosine square of x over sine square of x. So eventually it's going to be cotangent square of x. And then back to the left-hand side, so this one is 1 over sine square of x times cosine square of x. So just cosine square of x over sine square of x. So eventually it's going to be cotangent square of x. So sometimes verifying the identity, you need to verify both sides. So if they're not written in the simplest form, or sometimes you only have to verify one side of the equation. Okay, so for the rest of this, you guys can try that. And the next one I'd like to talk about here is the sum and difference identity of sine, cosine, and tangent. So for sine, the um, sum and difference identity, so let's say we do have sine of a plus minus b. So this one is written as sine of a, cosine of b, and then plus minus cosine of a, sine of b. So this one can be found on the formula sheet. And then for cosine, the identity, the sum and difference. So this one is cosine of A, cosine of B. If that's a plus, then we start with the minus. If that's a minus, then we need to alternate the sine to its plus. So negative positive, sine A, sine B. And then for tangent, so it's A plus minus B. So tangent of A plus minus tangent of B all over. 1 minus tangent of A, well, minus, and then plus. Again, alternated sign. If the top is positive, that means the denominator is minus. If that's a minus, that means the denominator is a plus. So now let's do some example here. So like number 2 is a negative degree. So what happens once I deal with the negative degree? It's a non-special angle. So this one you can split it into two special angles. Another thing that I can convert this one to, it's the odd even function property. So sine of negative theta, it's the same as negative sine theta. So basically this one can be written as sine of 75. So it's negative sine of 30 plus 45. So we got negative, so sine of 30, cosine of 45 plus cosine of 30 and then sine of 45 and then basically just find out the exact ratio for this so sine of 30 it's 1 half cosine of 45 root 2 over 2 
and then cosine of 30, root 3 over 2, sine of 45, root 2 over 2. And then basically the rest of the ratio, you just want to multiply, just want to multiply them straight across. So root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. So eventually this one, the ratio, is written as negative. Negative just put it outside, so root 2 plus root 6 over 4. And also this one can be written as negative root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Okay, so for the difference, the sum of sine. And also this one is the same problem can be done with different strategies. So this one, you can just come up with the negative angle or the negative radian for the, for the sum. Okay, so now what about for the one that's considered cosine? So let's say number 6. So cosine of 7 pi over 12 is a radian. So this one can be written as cosine of 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12. And also simplify this. So this one is cosine of pi over 4 and then pi over 3. Again, we want to use those special radian. So special radian, it's like pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, etc. Or in terms of degree, it's like 30 degree, 60 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree, and 120, so on and so forth. It's all about within the special right triangle. Okay, so expand it. So cosine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 3. So this one is the sum of cosine. We need to alternate that plus to minus. So sine of 45, or sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 4, so cosine of 45, root 2 over 2, cosine of pi over 2, that's 0. Wait, that's not pi over 2, excuse me, it's pi over 3. So cosine of pi over 3, then that would be cosine of 60, 1 half. So sine of pi over 4, root 2 over 2, sine of pi over 3, so sine of 60, root 3 over 2. And then straight across, root 2 over 4 minus root 6 over 4, so we do have root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So the sum and difference. And tangent is quite similar, just plug in the number, the ratios, and then evaluate. So let's do the one with tangent. So this one is quite similar to the one that we have, negative 7 power 12. So tangent is the odd function, so tangent can be written as negative tangent of 7 power 12. So negative tangent of pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 4 all over 1 minus tangent of pi over 3 tangent of pi over 4. So using that the sum identity of tangent. So tangent of pi over 3 so tangent of 60 degree which is root 3. Tangent of pi over 4 then that's 1. 1 minus tangent of pi over 3 root 3 times 1 root 3. And then this one, basically, you want to rationalize it. So multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus root 3. So as you can see that, this one, we just convert that from trig to algebra 2, radical expression. So negative, this one is just the perfect square trinomial, so which is considered 3 plus root 3 plus 1. Again, the negative, we just want to put it outside. And then denominator difference of two square patterns so it's 1 minus 3 so simplify the whole thing negative just leave it outside the fractions so 4 plus 2 root 3 all over negative 2 so negative negative positive divide it so that means we're gonna have 2 plus root 3 okay so now let's see what else that we have with identity what about the double angle so this one using the double angle identity so sine of 2 theta it's just like 2 sine theta cosine theta and then secant is given already so theta this one is bounded between pi and 3 pi over 2 so that means the angle it's allocated in quadrant 3 so the given ratio shows that is what opposite well hypotenuse over adjacent Hypotenuse, it's always positive, so it's 25. Adjacent, it's negative 24. And then you want to find out the missing ratio here. Okay, so try to get that ratio. So this one, basically just plugging that after you use the Pythagorean theorem, plugging a number to set up the ratio, and then multiply them straight across. 
And then for cosine of 2 theta, so we do have three different identity for cosine of 2 theta. So one of those is cosine square of theta minus sine square of theta. And then the other one is 1 minus 2 sine square of theta. And then the third one is 2 cosine square of theta minus 1. So it doesn't matter which one that you apply. Eventually, it's going to be the exact same ratio. So cosine of theta, so let's just apply the second one. So it's 1 minus 2. Well, it's easier to apply the first, uh, either the the third one, well, let's see. Because secant is just the reciprocals of cosine, so it's easier to apply the third one. So there's no need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the missing segment. So cosine of 2 theta, so 2 cosine square of theta minus 1. So again, secant, so this one is bounded in quadrant 1, so from 0 to power 2. So the given ratio is considered 4 over, if the denominator is not shown, it's 1. So it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And this one here, so 2 cosine of theta, so 2 times 1 over 4 quantity squared minus 1, so 2 over 16 minus 1, so 1 8 minus 1, so it's negative 7 over 8. Now what about for those secant, cosecant, cotangents? So anytime they deal with the secant, cosecant, cotangents, we can always apply the reciprocal identity. So like this one here, secant of 2 theta, it's just written as 1 over cosine of 2 theta. So using that, the formula, the one that we did, 1 over 2 cosine square of theta minus 1. So secant, this one is being bounded from negative power 2 to 0. So it's right here in the fourth quadrant. So the ratio, hypotenuse over adjacent, so 5, 4, and then plugging the number, so 1 over 2 times cosine of theta, 4 fifth. Quantity squared minus 1, so it's 1 over 16 over 25 times 2, 32 over 25 minus 1. And then this one subtracts, so 32 minus 25, so 7 over 25. And then we take the reciprocals of this ratio, so it's 25 over 7. Okay, so just like that. And now let's do the one with cotangent. So cotangent is just like 1 over tangent of theta. So this one is double angle, so tangent of 2 theta. So for the double angles of tangent, it's always written as 2, tan, two tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent square of theta. Okay, so using the identity. So this one is bounded from 3 pi to 7 pi over 2. So it's in quadrant 3. So this one, that means you're going around the unit circle more than once. So back to here. And then the given ratio, cotangent is 4 third. So you might be wondering, supposed to be negative, negative. It is, because negative over negative, that turns out to be positive. That's why the sign, they're not showing here. So this one is adjacent over opposite. So negative 4 over negative 3. Hypotenuse, obviously, is 5. And then plug in the number. The ratio, so we got 1 divided by 2 tan, so tangent is, then that'll be 3 over 4. And then all over, 1 minus 3, 4, quantity square. Okay, let's put it right here. So 1 divided by 2 times 3, 4, so 6 over 4. Reduce, 3 half. All over. So this one is 1 minus 9 over 16. So 9 over 16, that means it's what, 7 over 16? Okay, so now divide it. So take the reciprocals of the ratio. So this one is just like 3 half. Well, actually, it's um, multiplied by the reciprocal, so let's just multiply this out first. So 1 over, got to be very careful with the bar. So 3 half times 16 over 7. Cross cancel, so we got 1 over 24 over 7. Take the reciprocal of the ratio, so we do have 7 over 24. For cotangent of 2 theta. And then the rest of those double angle, they're quite similar. Now, what about the half angle? So the half angle, let's take, let's take a look at the one that is like secant. So cosecant of theta. 
So we need to find out the position of the half angle's location, okay? Because that for the half angle cosine and sine, it could be positive or negative. So secant of half angles, theta over two. So let's find out cosine of theta over two first. So according to the formula, it could be plus minus, and it's what square root of one plus cosine of theta over two. So for the half angle's location is three pi over four, two pi. So that means it's in the second quadrant. So cosine in the second quadrant is always negative. So we're using the negative identity for the half angle. And then we do know that the given ratio, so this one theta is bounded from three pi over two to two pi, the position of the original angle. The given ratio is hypotenuse over opposite, because that's cosecant. And then you want to find out the adjacent, so adjacent using the Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagorean triple. So a squared plus negative seven quantity squared equals 25 squared. So a squared plus 49 equals 625. So a squared equals subtract. So this one, six, seven, five, seventy-six. So this one should be a perfect squared number. And I believe this one, it's uh, 24. Okay, so a is 24. So plugging the number, so one minus uh, negative, negative one and then one plus cosine of theta. So 24 over 25, and then over two. So this one, 25 plus 24, 49 over 25, divided by two, so that means multiply by one half. Don't forget about the negative sign. And this one, nothing we can cross cancel, just multiply them straight across. So root 49, negative root 49 over 50. And then reduce, so negative seven over, so square root of 50, 25 and two, so it's five root two. Rationalize it, multiply by root two top and the bottom. So negative seven root two over 20, uh, over 10, excuse me, because root two times root two is two times five, then that'd be 10. Okay, so for the half angles, so got to be careful. There's so many steps involved right there. And then to look at that, the one with uh, cosecant, okay, like 26. So the given ratio, so this one is bounded in quadrant one, so that means the half angle, it's also in quadrant one. Okay, so everything's positive. And then tangent of theta is given already, opposite over adjacent, one half. Cosecant of half angle, so just finding sine of half angle first. So everything in the with the half angle is positive. So that means positive. So square root of one minus cosine of theta over two. So plug in the ratio, so one minus cosine of theta. So cosine of theta, then this one which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So root five. Hypotenuse root five, so it's two over root five divided by two. So this one combined them, so it's root five, radical. Gotta be careful, the radical is kind of bothering people here. So the outer radical, just keep it that way. So this one's written as root five minus two over root five, divided by two, that means you multiply by the reciprocal. So multiply those numbers straight across. So we do have radicals of root five minus two over two root five. So for the inner radicals, just want to rationalize it. So multiply root five times the bottom inside a radical. So root five times root five, which is five, minus two root five, all over, two times five, 10. And for those you might be wondering, do I need to rationalize this again? Yes, you may. Or you can just leave that with the radical of another radical. So try to rationalize it, so separate the radical. So five minus two root five, all over root 10. And then multiply by root 10, top and the bottom. Distribute, so multiply the radicals. So this one is root 50 minus 20, root five, all over 10. So try to simplify it all the way through. So that would be the, the final solution. 
Or we can just leave it like this. Okay, so now let's see what else. So half angle, cotangent, sine, so they're quite similar. And now let me go back to this packet here. So there's another one that I would like to talk about here. It's like verifying the identity. No, actually finding the inverses. So once you deal with the problem inverses, so this one, so basically we just want to set up the diagram. So inverse of any kind of trig ratio, it's always finding the angle. So draw the diagram, so cosine inverse of cosine of x. So that means it's just like cosine of theta. So that equals x. So x over 1. So in the first quadrant here, so positive ratio, so x over 1, so x adjacent, hypotenuse 1. Opposite, it's not given, so using the Pythagorean theorem, it's 1 minus x squared. So this one can be written as theta minus inverse of sine of root 2 over 2, which is what, 45 degrees, or pi over 4. And then using the difference of sine, so expand it, so sine of theta, cosine of pi over 4, minus cosine of theta, sine of pi over 4. Sine of theta, so using that triangle again, written, well this one is written in terms of x, so this one, that means what? It's opposite over hypotenuse, so square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, opposite, yours adjacent, and the hypotenuse. So this one is just like a bunch of substitution. Cosine of pi over 4, that would be considered root 2 over 2. Minus cosine of theta, using that same triangle here. So it's x over 1. Sine of pi over 4, root 2 over 2. So basically combine this all together. So root 2 over 2, that's just the greatest common factor. Fold it out. And then the radical with the variable. So basically just want to group them together. Like this. And the other one is quite similar. So this one is written as 3x over 1. So you might be wondering, hypotenuse 1, 3x. Well, x could be any fractions. Okay, so first quadrant. Opposite over hypotenuse, and then adjacent, then that'll be considered square root of 1 minus 3x quantity square, 9x square, using the Pythagorean theorem. So theta. So this one is written as tangent of theta, inverse of tangent of 0, so opposite over adjacent is 0, so that means the opposite is 0. So opposite is 0, so that means it's 1 comma 0, which is what? 0 degree. So this one basically just written as tangent of theta. So tangent of theta, using that opposite over adjacent, so we do have 3x over square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Rationalize it, multiply the same radical, top and the bottom. So eventually we do have 3x times square root of 1 minus 9x squared, all over 1 minus 9x squared. Okay? So make sure that guys watch the video over again. So we're going to have a unit test. So based on the trig identity. So this Friday. And either just fast forward, just rewind to the part that you need more focus. Okay. So thank you for watching the video today. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one.